Thanks, Gloria, and I'm Randy Hansen in World Headline News today. Obama uses recess appointments to sidestep GOP on consumer protection labor board. And Bachman bows out of GOP presidential race. And McCain endorses Romney for GOP nomination. And Syrian activists denounce Arab League monitoring mission. And multiple bombings killed 24 in Baghdad. And EU agrees to ban Iranian oil imports. Bahraini forces tear gas demonstrators. And a report says U.S. newspaper published pro Bahrain editorial after lobbying. And runaway U.S. teen mistakenly deported to Colombia. And Texas police stay teen holding pellet gun. And Delaware death row prisoner set for release after conviction overturned. GVTV News would like to say the views expressed on our news broadcast do not necessarily reflect the views of NCTV Digital Media Center. But before these stories, GV TV News would like to thank one of our underwriters who supports one of your, the only visual video news media in the Maddie County, us. Today's first world news story, President Obama has used a recess appointment to install former Ohio Attorney General Richard Cudre as the first head of the new Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Senate Republicans had refused to confirm Cudre since Obama nominated him earlier this year. Announcing his move in Ohio, Obama said he would defy Republican attempts to obstruct the agency's work. He said the only reason Republicans in the Senate have blocked Richard is because they don't agree with the law that set up a consumer watchdog in the first place. They want to weaken the law. They want to water it down. Financial firms have armies of lobbyists in Washington looking out for their interests. You need somebody looking out for your interests, fighting for you, and that's Richard Cudray. The borough has created was created 2010 Dodd-Frank Financial Oversight Law, enacted in response to the financial crisis. Republicans are threatening to sue the White House over the recess appointment, contending that the Senate is still technically in session. President Obama also had made recess appointments to fill three vacant positions on the National Labor Relations Board, avoiding a suspension of the board's operations. The NLRB had faced the prospect of shutting down this month, one board member's term expiring and Republicans refusing to confirm two Obama nominees, thereby leaving the board without a quorum. But on Tuesday, Obama tapped Democrats Sharon Block and Richard Griffin and Republican Terrence Flynn to fill the vacant seats. In a statement, U.S. Chamber of Commerce denounced the move, saying it will further poison the well with regard to labor management issues pending in front of the board and on Capitol Hill. Labor leaders, meanwhile, have praised the recess appointments. FLCIO President Richard Trunk uh, said that the president exercised constitutional authority to ensure the crucial importance agencies protecting workers and consumers are not shut down by Republican obstructionism. Republican Michelle McBachman in Minnesota has dropped out of the Republican presidential race. Bachman announced her departure one day after finishing sixth in the Iowa caucuses. In an exit speech to supporters, Bachman took aim at President Obama's signature health care plan and said, I believe firmly that what the Congress had done and what President Obama had done in passing Obamacare endangered the very survival of the United States of America, our republic, because I knew that in my it was my obligation to ensure that President Obama's program of socialized medicine was stopped before it became fully implemented. 
Last night, the people of uh, Iowa spoke in a very clear voice, and I have decided to stand aside. I believe that if we're going to repeal Obamacare, turn our country around, and take back our country, we must do so united, and I believe that we will rally around the person in our country and our party and our people select to be the stand selected to be the standard bearer. Those might end up like vice president or something. Republican Michelle Bachman left the stage after dropping out of the presidential race without offering an endorsement of another of the remaining candidates. Fresh off his registered thin Iowa victory, Mitt Romney campaigned in New Hampshire on Wednesday ahead of the primary there. Romney picked up an endorsement from Arizona Senator John McCain, who defeated Romney in the Republican nomination in 2008. McCain said, I am really here for one reason, one reason only, that is to make sure that we make Mitt Romney the next president of the United States. And New Hampshire, and New Hampshire is the state that will catapult him into victory in a very short period of time. That's why I'm here. And Syrian activists continue to announce an ongoing Arab League inquiry into violence in the country as a sham. According to the activists, Syrian authorities have led the investigators into areas loyal to the government and have falsely created impression of a minimal army presence in the streets. The Arab League has acknowledged around 400 people have been killed in recent weeks despite the presence of approximately 100 monitors in Syria. Earlier. Yesterday, the Syrian government announced the release of 552 political prisoners, but thousands are believed to still remain behind bars. In Iraq, at least 24 people have been killed and dozens more wounded in a series of bombings targeting Shia neighborhoods in the capital, Baghdad. It was the latest major attack to hit Baghdad following bombings that left 60 people dead two weeks ago. A military trial is about to begin on the last of the U.S. Marines charged in the massacre of the 24 Iraqi civilians in an Iraqi village in Haditha in November 2005. Victims included women and children who were killed when the Marines burst into their homes and shot them dead in their nightclothes. Marine squadron leader Staff Sergeant Frank Woodrich will be tried on manslaughter charges in the military courtroom at Camp Pendleton near San Diego. Jury selection began and the opening arguments are expected on Friday. Burdock was last defendant to face charges for the Hadatha killings. Six other Marines have been charged, dropped, or dismissed, while another soldier is, was acquitted. European Union members have agreed in principle and pledged to ban imports of Iranian oil as part of the international effort to pressure Iran over its alleged nuclear activities. The European move follows a new round of U.S. sanctions in Iran enacted last month. It, this month, in Washington, State Department spokesperson Victoria Nuland praised the European Union's action. And the demonstrations are continuing in Bahrain against the U.S.-backed Sunni monarchy months after the first pro-democracy protest broke out. On Wednesday, Bahraini forces tear-gassed a crowd of peaceful protesters who had approached a line of police officers with their arms outstretched, indicating their peaceful intent. Video footage shows Bahraini forces unleashed large amounts of tear gas into the crowd. Demonstrators had gathered to protest the death of a 15-year-old boy who had died last week after he was shot in the face with a tear gas canister. A second Bahraini protester died on Monday as a result of excessive tear gas inhalation. Human rights groups say that more than 50 people have been killed since Bahraini government launched its crackdown on protesters in February. Bahrain is a key strategic ally of the United States in the Middle East and home of the U.S. Navy 5th Fleet. In other Bahraini news, Salon.com has revealed a Washington Times com comment piece urging support for Bahraini government was published following a push of Bahraini lobbyists. The editorial was written by retired Vice Admiral Charles Moore, the former commander of the U.S. Navy's 5th Fleet. Moore is now a senior-level executive at Lockheed Martin, which has sold hundreds of millions of dollars of weapons to Bahrain. Newly disclosed records show Washington Times published the piece after lobbying from Sinitas International, a company hired by Bahraini government and the officially registered foreign agent of the Bahraini Kingdom. A 15-year-old Texas teenager is being held in a Colombian detention center after being mistakenly deported by U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, or ICE. Jacadrian Turner, an American citizen, ran away from home in November 2010 at the age of 14 following her parents' divorce and death of her grandfather. In April, Turner was arrested with authorities in Houston for shoplifting and gave the authorities a fake name. The name appeared to belong to an undocumented Colombian immigrant who had warrants for her arrest. Turner, who is African-American, does not speak Spanish, was subsequently deported to Colombia despite having her fingerprints taken by ICE officials. Turner's grandmother used Facebook and help of the Dallas police to track her down. Colombia officials reportedly took Turner into custody at the request of the U.S. Embassy, but have so far refused to release her. Some reports have indicated she may be pregnant. 
In Texas, a 15-year-old high school student was shot and killed by police on Wednesday after brandishing a pellet gun in a school hallway. Police say the victim, Jamie Gonzalez, pointed the weapon at police and ignored repeated commands to drop it. The weapon was found to be a pellet gun, not a handgun, only after the shooting. A death row prisoner in Delaware is on the verge of being released after two decades behind bars. German Wright, Germaine Wright, I'm sorry, who is African American, was sentenced to death in 1991, slay, slain of a liquor store clerk, Philip Seifert. But this week, Superior Court Judge John Parkins Jr. overturned the conviction, calling the case against Wright weak and non-existent. With no physical evidence, no murder weapon, no witness able to identify Wright from a lineup, and key evidence withheld from his defense, Wright confessed to the murder in a videotaped interrogation that was apparently high on heroin at the time. And that's it for the World News Today. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your only visual video news media in Nevada County. That's right, it's us, GVTV News. Something happening here But what it is ain't exactly clear There's a man with a gun over there Telling me I got to beware That's right, it's time for the police blotter and pictures in the blotter, not from these actual events, but used for visual aid only. Grass Valley Police Department on Tuesday, 7.48 a.m. A caller from Sutton Way reported glass had been broken out on a bus shelter. At noon, a caller from 200 block of Dorsey Drive reported theft of a white Thunderbird. At 12.41 p.m., a caller from 100 block of Florence Avenue reported the theft of a wireless printer. And 1.47 p.m., a caller from 200 block of North School Street reported a man on drugs was refusing to leave. At 4.33 p.m., a caller from Dalton Street requested extra patrols due to loitering juveniles. At 6 p.m., a caller from 600 block of Freeman Lane reported a woman throwing items from around a store. At 8.12 p.m., a caller from 200 block of Dorsey Drive reported hearing three or four loud bangs. At 9.59 p.m., a caller from 100 block of South Auburn Street reported a man with paint on his face and sweater, possibly from huffing. At 11.45 p.m., a woman from 200 block of South Church Street reported a man tried to hit her with a baseball bat. He was arrested on suspicion of spousal abuse. In Nevada County Sheriff's Office on Tuesday, 8.50 a.m., a caller from 15,000 block of Gold Cone Drive reported finding mail strewn in the roadway. At 8.52 a.m., a caller from 16,000 block of Aliato Drive reported the theft of vehicle wheels and a guitar from an unlocked vehicle. Notice the word unlocked. 9.04 a.m., a caller from 11,000 block Agnes Way reported vehicle had been gone through, but nothing had been taken. Person called back to report vandalism. 9.38 p.m., a caller from 14,000 block Powerline Road reported ongoing issues with theft of property. And 10.02 a.m., a caller from 18,000 block of Oak Tree Road reported possible vandalism to a vehicle. 11.35 a.m., a caller from 10,000 block of Melody Road reported missing dependent adult who was later located. 11.46 a.m., a caller from 14,000 block of Horseshoe Lane reported the theft of a firearm from a residence about six or eight months ago. And 12.47 p.m., a caller from 11,000 block of Francis Drive reported an unlocked vehicle had been broken into and DVDs and CDs were taken. 3.15 p.m., a caller from 10,000 block of Valley Drive reported theft of a license plate. And 5.44 p.m., a caller from Hutto Road and Big Oak Drive reported hearing several gunshots. 
7.32 p.m., a woman from 14,000 block of Parsons Drive reported a person refusing to leave and hiding in the bushes. And 7.56 p.m., a woman from Oak Meadow Road reported people are refusing to leave, yelling at her to come to the door. They left and she requested extra patrol. 9.55 p.m., a man from 11,000 block of Upper Circle Drive reported a vehicle passed his residence twice that had duct tape over its license plate. And Wednesday, 1.23 a.m., a person fled from a possible stolen vehicle in the 15,000 block of Birch Meadows Drive. No crime was found to have occurred, and the vehicle was towed. At 3.23 a.m., a woman from 21,000 block of Wits End reported hearing a gunshot. At 5.10 a.m., a woman from 10,000 block of Happy Dale Court reported a person pushed her and then took her medications and her bank card. 5.13 a.m., a man from 11,000 block of Alpine Lane reported his daughter snuck in the house and is refusing to leave. In Nevada City Police Department on Tuesday. 11.59 a.m., a caller from South Pine and Cabin Street reported people throwing trash off a bridge. They were admonished. 8.38 p.m., a caller from Nevada Street and Willow Valley Road reported hearing more than 10 gunshots. And 9.41 p.m., a caller from 300 Block of Broad Street reported an elderly woman who seemed drunk and incoherent jumped into the back seat of a vehicle. And that's it for the police blotter today. Now another thanks to one of our underwriters who supports your, you guessed it, only video visual news media in Nevada County, GVTV News. Soundcheck Music Center, the rock and roll connection. We have guitars, amps, drum equipment, sound accessories, lessons and repairs. We are located at 671 Maltman Drive, Grass Valley, 530-272-7236, open seven days a week. In local news headlines, man arrested just days before self-surrender at jail. An erratic behavior leads to arrests. In coalition to host community forum on marijuana. In California court to mole expiration date for clergy abuse. In today's first local story, written by Liz Keller of the Union, a rough and ready man who was set to self-surrender to county jail authorities Friday for a one-year sentence on weapons and drug charges, was arrested again Monday. Craig Taylor Frady, 32, had been sentenced to 365 days in jail and five years probation after pleading no contest to possession of a machine gun, possession of methamphetamines for sale, possession of controlled substance while in possession of a loaded firearm. His sentence also included an inpatient drug rehab program after his jail term. The plea agreement stemmed from a March 2010 arrest when Nevada County Narcotics Task Force members found four grams of methamphetamine and 12 weapons, including shotguns, handguns, and an AR-15 rifle. It apparently was modified to be fully automatic at his residence. Freddie was supposed to surrender and begin his jail term on Friday, said his attorney, Stephen Munkelt. The judge had imposed an interim condition that Frady attend self-help meetings, and in mid-December, he provided proof of attendance at a court hearing. But Frady was arrested on Monday after allegedly being found with a knife during a traffic stop in violation of his probation terms. Frady was passenger in a vehicle being driven by Diana Juanita Diltz, 38, of North Highlands, that was stopped by Nevada County Sheriff's deputies at about 11.30 p.m. at Highway 49 and Gold Flat Road. Because Freddy was on search and seizure terms, he was searched and the deputy found a large gravity knife on his person, said Captain Jeff Powell. A search of the vehicle uncovered a hidden compartment in the console that contained about 0.73 grams of crystal methamphetamine and a glass pipe. Freddy was booked into county jail on suspicion of possession of a controlled substance and drug paraphernalia, as well as violating probation and is being held without bail. Diltz was arrested on suspicion of transporting a controlled substance for sale, using false compartment to conceal a controlled substance, and possessing a drug of drug paraphernalia. She was booked and released on a $26,000 bail. In another Liz Keller story, a Grass Valley woman was arrested after allegedly smashing a vehicle's window during a methamphetamine binge, and her concerned boyfriend ended up in jail as well as after he called 911. Multiple callers began reporting erratic behavior by a woman identified as 28-year-old Carly Ann Scaletti 
At about 9.30 a.m. Tuesday, Scaletti was reported to be walking through a neighboring yards in Paradise Drive in Rough and Ready, then screaming with a large stick in her hand on Valley Drive, according to dispatch reports. She was seen running through Rough and Ready, screaming that people were trying to kill her, said Nevada County Sheriff's Captain Jeff Powell. She then was reported to be standing on top of a vehicle, breaking out the windows with a stick. Deputies found Scaletti in the corner of Rough and Ready Highway in Penn Valley Drive. She said she had injected way too much meth. Dispatchers received a 911 call from her boyfriend, identified as Robert Jeremy McCulley, 31, who was concerned about her. When deputies arrived at McCulley's residence in a 10,000 block of Valley Drive, they allegedly located credit cards that did not belong to him, as well as about 20 computers. He said they were stolen, but he did not know from where. Detectives are currently investigating the alleged theft, trying to track down the owners of the computers. Well, if they can't find them, I could use an extra one. Deputies also allegedly located drugs and drug paraphernalia at McCauley's residence, including 1.61 grams of methamphetamine, suspected heroin, 16 syringes, spoons, pipes, and a bong. Scaletti was arrested on suspicion of being under the influence of a controlled substance and was being held in lieu of a $1,000 bail. McCauley was booked into the county jail on suspicion of possessing narcotics, possession of controlled substance, being under the influence of a controlled substance, and committing a felony while on bail. He was being held in lieu of a $11,750 bail. The Coalition for Drug-Free Nevada County is hosting a community forum January 18th to address issues and concerns with marijuana in our neighborhoods, schools, and workplaces. Coalition was put together as a panel of professionals to provide information and expertise, resources that include Dr. Aaron Cleveland, Don Bassi from Nevada County Against Residential Cannabis Cultivation, Attorney Andrew Wilson, Nevada County District Attorney Cliff Newell, Sheriff Keith Rowell, and Nevada County Schools representative, one of them. There will be questions and answers, session, resource, and information tables, drug screening information, as well as information about health risks and land use and legislation and work policies. Forum will be held 4 to 6 p.m. January 18th, United Methodist Church, 236 South Church Street, Grass Valley. For those of you who want to keep it illegal. San Francisco's California's highest court is hearing a pres precedent-setting ca case Thursday that could expose California's Roman Catholic diocese uh, on, on abuse cases. The case being argued before the California Supreme Court involved six brothers in their 40s and 50s who alleged were molested by an Oakland priest during the 70s and did not link between their psychological problems as adults and what happened to them as children until 2006. Priest Donald Broderson was forced to retire and made abuse allegations in 93 and died in 2010. Statutes of limitation generally prevent plaintiffs from bringing civil complaint against long ago events, but the California legislature has expanded the time limits for child abuse lawsuits several times to make it easier for victims of childhood abuse to seek damages. Most recently, it opened a one-year window 2003 people to sue churches, schools, and other employees that no one only shielded accused molesters in decades earlier. The Oakland Dios... Di I don't know how to say that thing. Well, whatever. I'm not... I'm sorry. I'm not Catholic. Don't know. Well, One-year window because since abolished 1998 provisions that allowed plaintiffs in child abuse cases to pursue court actions against perpetrators, employers that were under the age of 26. All brothers had passed 26 by that time. The brother's lawyer contends neither time limit applies to their clients because the series of amendments adopted during the 90s that gave the victims three years from the time they discovered their mental suffering stemmed from long ago abuse to go to court. A medieval appeals court agreed in 2009 reversing the trial judge that had thrown out the well, whatever, the statute is set to of uh, cake layers and questions for the court is unraveling all these successive layers of modifications to try to determine a uniform rule of people over the age of 26 to bring action against institutional defendants. Richard Simmons, a Highwood lawyer, had represented a clergy abuse plaintiff, said. At least eight other clergy abuse lawsuits involve similar claims of delayed discovery of psychological injury are on hold through the state pending the Supreme Court decision on the Oakland case. Broderson admitted in a sworn deposition he gave in 2005 in cases brought by other grown men that he had sexual relationships with four sets of underage brothers, including the last two of the brothers in the case now before the Supreme Court, as well as several other boys. The bro brothers of the Oakland case said his testimony triggered their realization that difficulties as adults stemmed from abuse. And that's it for World News Today. We'd like to thank the Union, Amy Goodman, Reuters, Associated Press, and others for the sourcing of our news, and especially you for watching. You can watch us. We broadcast on Comcast Cable, 
and see channel 11 uh 8 a.m 3 p.m 7 30 p.m <coughs> excuse me <laughs> i knew i was going to sneeze but i was trying to stop we also are streamed on internet net and ctv's digital media center website uh nevada county tv.org gvtv.org and don't forget grass valley television plays 24 7 on the net grass valley television.com we post to facebook youtube lip.tv tv and many other sites we got a new one grass valley tv vidcaster.com it's a good one you should check it out content is controlled by the producer of this newscast me and grass valley television and is not necessarily the opinion of nctv digital media center or even me it's news grass valley television also videotapes local events around nevada county you have any need uh or in one more info about that you can call us grass valley television at gmail.com this is it for today we'll talk to you monday should be monday Christopher's Old World Deli and Catering Company has brought its delicious food and service downtown Grass Valley. Do you like desserts? They got them. You like international style lunches? They got them. Christopher's Deli and Catering for parties, get togethers, weddings, or Whatever. Open seven days a week. Bell Star Shop is a one of a kind place you will find on the ridge. Steaming hot coffee and a cool atmosphere with healthy food, organic desserts, and meals available. Belle and her smile will not be forgotten the first time you visit. Clean like a zest bar, when did you say so? Is there a place better for my face in the bay? No, hearing beats on the streets till they close they go. Moving on the dance floor while singing the songs they know. Clean like a zest bar, when did you say so? Is there a place better for my face in the bay? No, hearing beats on the streets till they close they go. Moving on the dance floor while singing the songs they know. Clean like a zest bar, when did you say so? Is there a place better for my face in the bay? No, hearing beats on the streets till they close they go. Moving on the dance floor while singing the songs they know.